Hi everybody, this is Jenny with Homeschool Teens with Jenny and it is my final review for chemistry. I am so just shocked how fast the second half of the year went. It's always that way. First semester, it kind of trugs along, but once you get to the holidays, everything flies. <laughs> and that was true this year too. I had two high schoolers this year. I had a ninth grader and an 11th grader and we started the year with both doing master books chemistry and i wanted to just give a final review of what our experience was i will say that we used the book and just the teacher guide that comes with it with all the labs and worksheets and stuff uh, we did not buy the academy videos to use alongside so that is one thing to note as I go through the review. Also, I wanted to give you the price, the book set. So the textbook and the teacher guide that has all the worksheets and quizzes and tests and lab sheets, that was $63.98. And then a lab kit can also be purchased separately. And that was $254.95. So the entire course was $318.93. Okay, so I was trying to think how I wanted to explain this course because to be very honest, it was a frustration pretty much the entire academic school year. And I didn't wanna just get on here and bash a curriculum. I just don't wanna do that. <laughs> um, so I wanted to divide things into positives and negatives because there were positives. There were things that came out of it that um, we enjoyed and that were fun. And that was the labs. We bought the lab kit and we had a family that we do life with. They go to a homeschool co-op with us. They live in our neighborhood. They had three high schoolers. I had two. We decided to do the labs together. And that was probably the highlight of this entire course was just lab day. Um, typically what we would do because we were already at co-op one day a week, we would use that afternoon when co-op was over and meet here at my house and do our chem labs. And that was the highlight of the whole year. And I will say that while we didn't use every piece in the lab kit, because we didn't do every single lab, there were weeks that we just couldn't. And so we did the majority of the labs. So some pieces of the lab kit we did not use, but the most used pieces of the lab kit were kind of the glass components, the glass stirrer, the glass cylinders, the droppers, uh, the um, test tubes, those kind of things. We use those almost on a weekly basis. So all of the like glass components of measuring and mixing and those kind of things were used really frequently. And the labs were mostly all successful. We had a few that kind of didn't quite do exactly what they were supposed to, but the majority of the labs all worked along with the lab kit that we had. It demonstrated concepts from the book and what we read about, and most of the time it explained them even better. So doing the lab, helped us understand what we were reading better. And so that's, in my opinion, the goal of doing labs. And so I was really happy with that. Um, and so that was the biggest positive I could give you from this year. I can also tell you that the lessons were short. They would be three to five pages a week and everything was in color, which if you have a kid that likes to be visually stimulated, that's important. I can kind of show you here the table of contents and everything was in color and to them that was inviting. It kind of drew them in. So let's talk about the other side and why we felt so frustrated with this course this year. I would say the number one thing is that I am not well versed in chemistry. And if you don't have someone with a chemistry degree or a chemistry background, the disadvantage to short lessons is that many times the concepts were not explained fully in detail enough. And so if I had a background to speak into that and I could bring more understanding from my experience around the text, that would have made it more successful. But I'm a liberal arts major and English and history, those are my things. 
art, fine arts, those kind of things. Science and math, not so much. And so both families that, while we were doing this together, both of us really felt the same way about every text chapter. So there was some frustration that concepts were just not covered as deeply as they needed to be. Another thing, and I have an example to kind of read to you from the textbook itself, is that many times concepts that were harder, they would take the approach in the textbook of, it's okay if you don't fully understand it, but here's the gist. Instead of just saying, here's all the details, let's grasp it and let's understand it, it was this, it's okay if you don't kind of get it, and it was very confusing. Even to me as an adult, my husband would agree with that as well because we brought him on this sometimes as well, but let me just read an example and kind of show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm reading from chapter 21 on acids and bases, and I'm going to be reading from pages 201 and 202, just an excerpt, okay? The first one is, one of the challenges of acid-base chemistry is to determine the acid and base content of a solution. When you know the pH of a solution, you can calculate the, high, the H plus and the corresponding OH negative of the solution. Skip down just two sentences. How comfortable you may or may not be with this exercise depends upon your understanding, your level of understanding of math. Even though this is not a math lesson, it shows how important that math can be. If you struggle with the math here, look at the pattern as to how it's done. And then they go through and show you the math. And then there's a couple sentences to wrap it up that says, if you have a pretty good math background, try this one. If your math is not at this level, do not panic. Do your best to follow the steps. It'll become more important later on. I don't like that. I don't like that approach. I want you to tell me how it's done, explain why it's done that way, and I wanna grasp it then. Don't tell me, it's okay if you kinda don't get it, we'll come back to it later. Because if you flip over to chapter 22, the very next chapter on weak acids and bases, and you go to page 212, it then goes into this kind of lecture that really rubbed me the wrong way. It said, an important skill to develop in life is to be able to remember what you've learned and be able to use it later. In the sciences especially, you have to go back and review what you've learned before and use it as you go along. This is a skill you need to take seriously and work hard at. This skill is critical to your growth and will help you in anything you do. This is also important for the study of the Bible because different passages of scripture have to come together for understanding. So the chapter before, it's kind of okay if you don't get it, we'll come back to it later. The next chapter, um, you need to make sure that you get it and you go back and revisit it and that you study it because this is a life skill. <laughs> do you see the imbalance there? These, this is just one example that we, if I would have taken notes throughout the whole course, I could have given you more examples. But this was the one that really stood out to me the most that was, it just rubbed me wrong. As a facilitator of the curriculum, I want you to give me what I need to know. I want you to teach me how to do it and why, and I wanna know that I get it then. And to me, it's important that you don't confuse me and say, well, it's okay if you don't get it, but have you gone back and reviewed what you didn't get because you need to know it, was just, it did not rub me right. And there was a lot of that kind of wording in this course. Um, it was almost too casual. Like, I want you to come at me a little more academically and professionally, not so much that. Um, so that was a big negative for me. Um, the quizzes and tests were a constant frustration as well because we would study the content, we would do the worksheet, we would um, study from the worksheet, and then I would give out the test or the quiz. And quite often what we ran across was just the formatting was very confusing and it didn't really um, reciprocate what we had read or studied. And it was just like they wanted to trick you 
or they wanted to to throw a curveball at you and I didn't like that. I didn't like that there were there was one lesson my husband came in on. I read it, I went through the worksheet and I had to look at the answer key as the facilitator to be able to answer my students' questions on what they were asking because I didn't know either. And then I went back in the book once I knew what they were asking for to try to find it. And it would be not anything bolded. It would just be something worded obscurely that was just picked out at a very non-obvious place. And my husband, very intelligent man, would say, what in the world is going on with this text? Like <laughs> he was even frustrated and confused and said, I don't, I don't really like the quality of this course. And this came up many times. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of it. And like I said, I feel weird about having to come forward with a negative review because overall, I will say we lived in a pretty constant state of frustration with this one. And I spent extra hours studying behind the scenes when things weren't explained well in the text so that I could present it to my kids where they would understand it. And so it took some extra background research and it just, it wore me out. By the end of the year, I was really burned out on this course as a facilitator, a mom, the one running the labs and all those things. Like I said, positive, the labs were great. We did it with another family. It was a time of just fellowship and community and we could ask each other questions. If they had questions, bounce ideas off one another. That was positive. That was good. Um, but the course as a whole, I just can't recommend, uh, especially if you're not coming into it with a strong chemistry background. If we had used the Academy videos, would it have gone differently? I don't know. We didn't use those. I will say we did purchase the Chemistry 101 videos and I got it in a sale. I guess it might have been Black Friday, but I got the streaming option and not the actual DVD. And my kids were really turned off by how outdated the video was, as well as it was very poor quality. It was very grainy and kind of blurry. And it just, that distracted them more than the content. And I was like, guys, focus, just focus on the content and what he's saying. Because when it came especially to the periodic table and the elements, he did a really good job of speaking into those in that program in the Chemistry 101. So we did use those videos as a supplement. We did not watch all of them. But overall, I can't recommend the course. All right, guys, so that's it for Masterbooks Chemistry. I am gonna be releasing a new series after this video talking about what we're gonna use next year. I will have a 10th grader and a 12th grader, and that is very new territory for me. It will be my first homeschool graduate coming up this coming year, and we have a lot of really fun things planned. So stay tuned, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you know when the next video is released, and I'll see you in the next one.